Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more on on Linda and I on our uh, story. Uh, last time I brought you through my surgeries and everything that I had done up here because uh, I <laughs> forgot it earlier. Um, so uh, we were up to Linda going to her orthopedic surgeon and uh, her pain specialist here. But uh, the orthopedic surgeon, he, he's really good he, in Little Rock. Um, he, he was one that was very cautious on, on, on things. He just wasn't going to jump into, okay, I'm going to cut you open again, you know. So well, she had to go through uh, quite a bit more of the shots um, with a pain specialist. Uh, she even went through a nerve ablation. I think that's how it's pronounced, ablation, uh, which was horrendous for her. Um, the best any of it had ever done was about four hours of relief. Uh, and that was a, a shot. Um, and that's about the only relief she got out of any of it. So went back to the neurosurgeon and he had the MRIs and all that and he looked at it and he first, one of the first things out of his mouth, he said, uh, who put that coflex in your back? And well, we told him, of course. He just kind of looked down and shook his head and went, I would have never done anything like that. He says, what you need, he says, you need me to go in, he says, and take that coflex out and put rods in the lower part of your back, uh, L4, L5, S1. So she said, you know, she wasn't really excited about another operation. And he said, I'm not going to guarantee anything. And as you can hear, the air conditioning kicks in because it is hot here again. But um, she didn't want another operation. But he said uh, that it's, uh, that's what he suggests. But he said, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to be any better. Uh, he says, I will give it a good try. Uh, he says, I will do the best I can to help you. He says, but there's no guarantees that it will help you with your pain. Uh, he said, it will keep you um, more upright as you get older because the vertebrae won't be deteriorating. So, She said, okay, she finally agreed to it. So we went back down to Little Rock, 6.30 in the morning, which is an hour and um, about an hour and a 15, hour and 20 minute drive from Russellville to the hospital. And uh, I mean, everybody just super, super nice. Uh, couldn't ask for a, a better, better hospital, uh, better nurses. Uh, and he went in, it took, uh, it took quite a while. Uh, I can't remember, six hours, I think it was. Five, six hours, somewhere in there. And he came back out, you know, talked to us and uh, said, well, I, I did what I could. Everything went good, you know, uh, everything strong and stout. He says, uh, I made sure that uh, uh, everything was gonna hold. He says, and I took that coflex out of there he says I don't know why it was put in in the first place so anyway um, when she got into the room <laughs> I, I didn't know if she was alive or dead uh, there was no movement in her um, they said she they had a hard time waking her up uh, she was just out of it I mean had to wake her up to to try to feed her, and, and I would have to feed her. 
the daughter was here from uh, Louisiana. She came up and uh, she would stay two or three days and then I would stay two or three days and, you know, to give each other a break, uh, slept at the hospital, uh, but they had to wake her up constantly. I mean, she slept and slept and slept. And I asked them, I said, is, is, is this normal? And she says she had one big operation. He, she says, yes, this is normal. So after a few days, she finally started coming around to where she could, you know, sit up and, and at least talk to us uh, and look at, look at us, but still so droggy. And finally, you know, they got her up and, you know, I was walking, trying to walk her and everything. Um, got that to where she could walk. So they said, okay, you know, we're going to send you home. So home we came with her. Um, it was terrible. She, when she got home, she still was pretty much out of it. She didn't. She don't remember what she did the first two or three days here at home. And I found her one time, I think a day after she come home, she was down on her hands and knees looking under her bed. And I said, what are you doing? And she says, I'm, I'm looking for something. I said, no, you don't need to look for something. So how she got down on her hands and knees like that, I have no clue. But I got her up, got her back into bed, and uh, still she had trouble eating, you know, had to be fed, got her up and walked her around and stuff, and finally she, she come out of it, but it was, boy, it was a long road to hoe, let me tell you. Um, she was in terrific pain, terrific pain from that surgery. Uh, and of course lo and behold no help after months of recuperation no help so i'm going to leave it right there for this for this session of it um and we'll go on into the rest of the doctor's visits and what was going on after that so now I'm going to switch over and to uh, tell you that uh, today, in the last few days, I haven't been feeling well. Uh, and Linda's pain is, is, is terrible, terrible. But I haven't been feeling well. My, my lungs burn, um, coughing. Um, can't really sleep good at night. So uh, I think it's what they call a flare-up for COPD. Uh, they say it can last anywhere from one day to three months. Uh, I haven't had many of them. Um, I think the longest one I had was like three weeks, which was <laughs> way too long. But um, that's how we are. And I wanted to tell you a little bit more about, you know, I do walking sticks. But, uh, you know, I've got so much time on my hands, I started doing some of the things I've done in the past and really didn't have time to do. Uh, I was a, I am a, a gunsmith, went to school in Colorado, uh, Lakewood, little burg off of Denver, uh, spent two years there going to school. Uh, I had a shop for quite a few years, uh, but I don't have a, a FFL license anymore, federal firearms license. Uh, there's too many rules and regulations now. and. Uh, besides, I really don't have a place to to have a shop down here. So what I do is I, I work on black powder, uh, rifles and pistols. Uh, you don't need an FFL to do that. And I also do reel repair, fishing reels. So that, that helps keep me, keep me busy. Plus, I do, <laughs> believe it or not, I make jewelry. I make uh, leather and glass bead uh, necklaces and uh, bracelets and stuff. Uh, love working with that stuff, the leather and the beads. 
So uh, it's a couple of things that I, I, I do. Uh, I just um, I try to keep busy. Um, and I'm hopefully I can sell a little bit of the stuff, you know, as we get going, uh, make a little extra money, but we'll see. Uh, and the pictures last last uh, week of the the hawk that was sitting on the, the back fence, uh, it's an immature Cooper's hawk. Uh, finally found out what it was. So uh, it's, uh, they have a nest here every year around here somewhere. Uh, it's either over here behind us or it's over in front of us over there in front of the house in the big trees over there. But uh, they're always here. They're here every year. They come in. So I just, uh, I think I'm going to stop everything right here this week. Uh, I got another picture of another little uh, hawk. I don't think this is a Cooper's, uh, but right after a rain, he's all fluffed up and soaking wet, sitting out here on, on the high wire. So I'm going to include that after this one. So thing I want to say is uh, please be safe, be safe, be safe, uh, wear your masks, do social distancing. Uh, we love you guys all, and we pray for you guys all. So until next time, bye-bye.